having, as we used to call it back then, Judge Granddaddy, as my grandfather, I have sort of two experiences. There's Granddaddy, where he was just that. He was just in my life as any other grandfather was, making sure that I got good grades and I was showered with support and love. But my experience changed probably in my young adult life. And that's really when I started to realize who he was outside of our family. Everywhere I would go, people would stop me at a gas station, in law school, um, in a grocery store, in a courtroom, and say, just want you to know your grandfather changed my life. And let me tell you this story that was a turning point in the civil rights movement. I have seen him in so many different incarnations. Charlie was the consummate political person in the city of New Orleans. He knew so many, he was around so much, and he was able to communicate to people who were running for office how to get elected. In 1971, when I was first running for governor, I was a young congressman. I knew very few people in New Orleans. At that time, the black communities were beginning to organize in New Orleans to become more politically active, and Charlie was very involved in that. His group was supporting me for governor, and he was very, very helpful, and I've never forgotten that. Brave man. When you get on a bench, you got a lot, you got a lot of people out there that want you to put everybody in jail, and he would always consistently use the middle ground to make sure that the person before him was treated fairly absolutely fearless in his approach to doing those things that he thinks are the right things to do. Totally committed to New Orleans. Anybody who has ever talked to him knows that his family came from the Lafitte Housing Development and many of the people that he had to work with in the criminal justice system he either knew them or he knew somebody in their family because they came from that neighborhood. And <clears throat> you hear people say all the time, oh, they don't forget where they came from. He truly never forgets where he came from. He can shape the kind of person he is and being the kind of uh, lawyer that he was and certainly being the kind of judge that he was when he would come into my courtroom, he always had the same two words for me. Little brother. Little brother. That's his, that's his thing. Little brother. Little brother this, little brother that. And over the years, I've tried to emulate what he did for me in taking an interest in younger lawyers. Uh, my very first uh, big case, my very first big trial, uh, Charlie tried it with me and we won. And so it's been happy days ever since. Six o'clock one morning, Charlie knocked on my door. Little brother, I thought you were going to law school. If you really want to go, I'll get you in Southern tomorrow. The next morning, and we drove to Baton Rouge. End of the day, I was in law school. He did it for me, he did it for a few other people. Charlie changed my life. The day that I met Mr. Elwire, he hired me to come and work in his law office and my life changed that day. A couple of years later, he ran for judge. People just warmed up right away. Judge Elwai was running against a very well-financed uh, opponent, and he didn't have much money in his campaign, but I've never seen a campaign with so many volunteers, so many people willing to help somebody. And it was all because of who he was and the way he treated so many people in the community. How much loved he is in this community is hard to describe. But the best way I would describe it is that when Charlie ran for judgeship, 98,000 people voted for him. The night that he won the election, and during his so-called uh, victory speech, I heard him say that he would administer justice but that he would temper it with compassion. And God knows he kept his word. Charlie had then a, an innate ability to, to and for lack of a better way of putting it, be in their shoes, to actually be where they were in life 
and to understand it from a perspective. This is a thing that he taught me because I didn't grow up in New Orleans and I didn't have that same kind of perspective of the city of New Orleans that Charlie had. He could use the court not to harm them, not to punish them for punishment's sake, but he could use the court to help them. Because I had a background similar to some of those people, well, I was involved very much in the drug court. His punishment for minor violations or non-compliance never was severe, but it was always instructive. When he came on a bench, it was the, the prosecutors used to have a, a large influence on a court. They passed bills that had minimum sentences, and all of that took away the discretion of a judge. So if a judge wanted to do, be fair and, and, and be human about this thing, he would, have to, he would have to use some judgment calls in order to give this person a fair trial. And he had that ability to do that. I was criticized by the Times Picayune, just like he was criticized by the Times Picayune in the news media. And irrespective of whether they're gonna put your print in the Times Picayune or they're gonna put you on Channel 6 News, you gotta do what's right. And Charlie did that, and I guess Charlie reinforced me a lot on doing that. Charlie L.Y. was a visionary a trailblazer when it came to criminal justice reform. When it wasn't popular, he believed that his mission was to help to balance the scale of justice for the underprivileged. All he cared about was the people. And that's what he would tell you all the time. I do this for the people every day. You know, and he said, little brother, I do this for the people. So that was who he was and that's who we all appreciate him for. And that's who he is today. And still to this day, I bet you Charlie's trying to do something to help somebody. It's just how he is. Recently, we had a private unveiling of Charlie's portrait, the soon to be hung, in Criminal District Courthouse. It was a very touching moment. Uh, it brought Charlie and most of us to tears, and uh, you know, it was a, a fitting tribute to a uh, life well lived. Young lawyers for years to come, uh, jurors and other citizens will look up and see the portrait of Charlie Elwha and know that he had a lasting impact on the city of New Orleans and on the criminal justice system. I'm so proud of my grandfather for not just the work that he's done, but the presence that he has been in my life as a constant example of um, balancing love and support, whether in his courtroom or, or outside of it. I don't think it's a time when we don't leave the house, we go somewhere and we don't meet someone who's so happy to see him and thank him profusely for making a difference in their lives. And I really feel very proud of him when that happens and it happens a lot. And so I said to him one time, you must feel really good when these kind of things happen. He said, yeah, I do. But you couldn't help but feel good when every, you know, when you turn around so many times and people are thanking you for making a difference in their lives, you know, and that's what I feel proudest of him.